One of the things I like about contemporary American poetry is, is that it's so diverse. And, uh, you know, a lot of people get upset. They say, oh, look at those people. I can't stand what they're writing. Why are they called poets? I welcome that. I grew up at a time when there was a kind of official style that was determined by a few literary magazines like the Kenyon Review and the Swanee Review and the Hudson Review. And it was a rather conservative literary style. And uh, I think the Beats did a, I think uh, the Beats did a great service to American poetry to sort of explode that notion so that, uh, so, so that we now see, uh, you know, if a guy wants or a woman wants to write a charged up, crazy, angry, uh, Whitmanian sort of scream against American capitalism, that can be a poem too. Uh, you, you don't have to have irony, as John Crow Ransom used to pronounce it. Irony said, ah, <laughs> uh, and uh, you don't have to be, you know, neoclassic in your structure. Uh, you don't have to be a kind of Mandarin poet. There's room for everybody. It's an open house, and I like that. Uh, but as far as a poet being a truth teller, I think I think I think that within the poem, uh, there's there's invention. But I think the invent the intention of the invention is to get to a greater truth of, in terms of of the of the, of the poet's emotion or response to the experience. And somebody said, "What does it take to write a poem? To be a poet?" And I said, "Well, it takes talent. You got to have." some verbal talent, just as you got to have foot speed to be a sprinter, so you have to have verbal talent to be a poet. You need persistence, drive, commitment. I don't know. It's all the same thing that, that will keep you there year after year. And you need luck. And the person said, what do you mean by luck? And I said, well, let's say you marry, the, you marry a beautiful man or a beautiful woman. And that man or woman could give a, you know, nothing about poetry. Why are we sitting home writing, you know, you're writing those goddamn poems and I want to go dancing. Well, you know, I mean, or, or why do we have to drive a, you know, a Chevette when we could be driving, uh, you know, a Lexus? Because you're writing your rotten poems. I mean, if they don't, if the person that you decide to live with, that man or that woman, doesn't take that enterprise as seriously as you do, you're in trouble. And that's luck. Because getting a good husband or a good wife is just luck. You are sexually nuts. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Especially if, maybe if you get married at 40, you got a brain. I don't know. But otherwise, it's not your brain that's directing you. And, and so if it works out, you are a lucky dog. Don't go telling people how smart you are. All right. So I'm done, and I'm, I've described all this. And Joy says, you forgot something, Phil. You forgot something you need to be a poet. And I said, what's that? She said, you need a story. You need a story. She's right. And I suddenly thought, you're right. There has to be something there that you have to tell. Now, Rilke tells us in his letters, we all have the story. It's the magic of our childhood, blah, blah. All right, he's right. But most of us lose contact with the magic of our childhood and remember it. As, as Larkin says, you know, or, or no, it's Orwell who talks about his memories of his father as it, when he was a child, a large man who smelled of cigarettes and said no. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> uh, it's not going to give you too many poems.